their offense? Uh, I mean, they're really talented. I mean, they, they can run the ball. I think they're 11 in the country running the football. Uh, they do a great job with what they do. Uh, they don't run bad plays. You know, they got a great O-line, uh, great skilled kids. Uh, the quarterback and the Wildcat quarterback do a great job. Um, I think they've gotten like six or seven of uh, their skilled players have played quarterback before. Uh, so that, they pose a lot of threats, and uh, they're well coached. They do a really nice job. Is there anybody you might compare them to in the SEC that you've played? I mean, they're, I mean, they have SEC players. You know, they've got an SEC scheme. Uh, they do a really nice job with what you know the, the the schemes that they have. You see how well coached they are with the different tweaks they have versus every defense, and uh, they always seem to find a way to get into the right play. Uh, the kids know what they're doing. They play really hard. They play really physical. Seeing some comparisons to Johnny Manziel, the quarterback. What have you seen from the quarterback? Yeah, well, if you watch the first game when they played Texas A&M, that kid put on a show. I mean, he's running around. He's making plays. Uh, you know, the thing that you see see, you know, I know people, a lot of people talk about our juice boys, the guys that are on our gray shirts and getting excited on the sidelines. You watch their tape, they've got the same group of guys on their sideline, you know, getting hyped, uh, waving towels, you know, hey, they have little choreographed dances, so they, they play with a lot of excitement, and you can tell, uh, you know, they're, they're a good football team. How has practice changed since the beginning of the week from now? Yeah, the first part of the week was, was development, the young guys were playing, uh, but we've gotten into you know, game plan mode, uh, working the game plan, you know, working our defense, and uh, you know the older guys getting back into the rhythm because uh, we try to treat it like you know, today was Wednesday, tomorrow's Thursday. We're getting ready to play a game, um, and then we get a little time off and do the same thing again. So when we leave here tomorrow, we want to be game ready. When you yeah, when you get to Memphis, what are the practices like there? What's your plan when you get there? It'll, it, pretty much the same. We repeat, you know, a lot of things, change the cards, change the calls, and, you know, script some different things, but, you know, the, the most of the game plan is in there. might be some little tweaks as we go, um, but, you know, there's, they're a good team. How do you avoid the distractions that kind of come to the towards the players? Yeah, I think this is a, this group, even though we started off really young, the experiences that they've had throughout this season, um, you know, and the, the battles that they faced and the things that they've, you know, gone through have really prepared them. I think they've got the right mindset uh, going into the bowl game. They know what a great opponent it is, and uh, you know you don't win ten games in college football without being a great team. And so they know it's a big challenge ahead. When you watched the tape from the scrimmage the other day, what, what kind of stood out to you? What was your kind of impression? Uh, you know, the, I, some of the practices have been a little bit better. You know, some of the guys, you know, had been their first time really playing in that stadium in a meaningful experience. So some of them kind of, you know, it was their first time doing it. They had played great for three days in the in the practices. We get over into the stadium and things change a little bit. So it's it's nice that it happened during bowl prep. Then they'll get to do it in the spring again twice. Then in the preseason, hopefully by next year, those young guys will have gotten some good experiences and be ready, you know, for SEC play. What got into John Harris out there? <laughs> <laughs> he makes plays. He makes plays. John, football. Just, just talk about how the secondary is being adapted now with Nico, or with his absence now, what you're planning to do back there. Yeah, I mean, we just got, you know, all year guys have had to step up. You know, lose Jay Hughes, lose D. Um, you know, Nico plays banged up, you know, most of the season. Uh, so those guys have had to, you know, get experience so you know there's gonna have to step up in even a even a bigger role and you know we'll miss Nico because he was a leader um, you know, he had had you know 40 plus starts in his career you know active current interception leader so you know he's a he's a big piece of what we did on defense this year so those guys got to step up pretty big for us. Will you try to play D in the bowl game or are you gonna try to hold him out and maybe get a gray shirt medical red shirt up for him? Yeah, that's that's a coach Mullen question so <laughs> I appreciate that. Yep you're welcome. Deontay stepping in for Nico's position that's what Kendrick said. Yeah he, he is I mean, there's a bunch of guys that are that are filling in for that role. So, you know, we'll just keep progressing, and you know, they'll do practice tomorrow, and then we'll practice through the bowl. We can just see how, you know, everything we do, we chart. You know, so whoever's performing the best, you know, with assignments, effort, loafs, those kind of things, you know, will be the guy that plays. What did you see? Cox plays in San Diego. He was practicing there earlier. <laughs> yeah, he, I mean, we put, during the bowl prep, we moved a lot of guys around to give them different experiences to see what they can do. Um, so you know, he's, he knows how to do different things, so we'll just see how much he does either one in the game. Good back with the opponent. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> <laughs>